Welcome aces. It's nice to be with you again. I hope you all had a really great break and you were able to relax and recharge a little bit. Um, so today for our music lesson, um, we're going to keep it pretty short and sweet. Um, we're going to share a few more examples from our Chrome Music Lab song maker, um, some of that our, our classmates came up with. Oh, nice job. Some things I noticed. Back and forth strategies. Moving up, straight line up, straight line down. Shorter straight line up, down. I noticed there were two spots where this person chose to repeat notes, and that kind of made it interesting. It wasn't just back and forth and back and forth. There was this little repeated section here. Oh, and then I noticed the ending. Bum, bum. Hmm. Added this extra little dough at the end just to um, kind of offset what the, the bass was doing. Very cool. All right, a few more. Ooh, lots of space in this one. Let's listen. Cool. This person chose to change the instrument sound so that um, it was a synthesizer. So it gave it that kind of more electronic feel. Um, and they left, ooh, look at that, they left almost the whole, the first half open, but then they had lots going on in the second half. They had a big straight line up, repeated notes, and then like some motion down. They also increased the tempo. They made it go faster, which is like another way to, you know, make your music your own. What speed do you want it to go at? We call that tempo in music. All right, very cool. A couple more. Cool. So I noticed they did use some straight line up, maybe a little, there's definitely repeated notes, repeated notes up here. <clears throat> but one thing I really noticed about this one is that sometimes their notes that they added were offset, so they were on the off beat. And sometimes they were on the beat and that gave it this really cool syncopated feel so when we talk about syncopation um, we later in the year we might just we might have this kind of feel to it where it's sometimes it's right with the beat and sometimes it's off of the beat especially right here this was this was cool all right very very nice. Two more. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so many cool things. I they started on dough, they ended on dough. Ooh, they went below this line a little bit and it changed the sound a bit of this first one. Big straight line up, big straight line down, and then repeated notes. Do, re, mi, do. Came back to do, which gave it that kind of feeling like, yeah, we're, we're at the end now. Even though it keeps repeating, we could end there at any time. Cool, do, re, mi, do, very, common and um, a good way to end songs. Awesome, awesome last one to share and I could have picked a lot more. Could have picked a ton more. Um, these are just the ones that we're gonna 
see now. Maybe we'll have more time in the future. Awesome. So big motion, straight line up, straight line down, straight line up, repeated and back and forth. And then started not going all the way, started going towards the middle, straight line down, straight line down again. And then they even had the dough, but they added some other things. So a couple times you saw people who had more than one um, square in a column and None of these really did it a lot, which is why we could follow the melodic line. We could follow it across. If we have too many things going on on each um, column, then the sound starts to not get, we can't really follow it. It just kind of has a, a sound, like a rhythmic sound to it. Thank you, thank you to everyone. Um, hopefully we'll have more time in the future to both see and hear more of our classmates' work, but also to have more opportunities to do it ourselves. So maybe you saw something in there that you can keep in your mind for another time. Or maybe you're just playing on a piano or a keyboard at home or whatever it might be. Some ideas about how we can make that melody line in music. All right, the next thing we're going to do is learn a little bit more about the brass family of instruments. Uh, we had learned about the string family and the woodwind family back in the fall a little bit um, and now we're gonna go on to the brass family. First of all I'm gonna play this short one minute clip here. Now the brass family has four members starting with the highest which is the trumpet. Next comes the curlicue of the horn and next the trombone. The largest and lowest and heaviest instrument is the tuba. All of the brass instruments are made of, you guessed it, brass. And they're all essentially a long tube that flare out at the end and they're all coiled up. Now, let me show you a horn, lots of coils. If you uncoiled all those tubes, they would be 27 feet long, which would be impossible to play and just really hard to carry around. In any case, the trumpet and the horn and the tuba have keys on that you play with your left hand, and the trombone has the slide that you move to change the length of the tubing and therefore the pitches. All the brass players buzz into a mouthpiece. <sighs> they buzz better than I do. And that gets the air moving that goes through the instrument and out of the bell. And they have to change the shape of their lips and their mouths and change the airflow to get different pitches. And the buzzing creates the vibration of the air that creates the sound. And as it goes through the bell, as it gets wider, it gets louder, kind of like a megaphone would. So we have four families of instruments, okay? We have the string family, we've already talked about them, violin, viola, cello, and bass. We have the woodwind family, which has all of these. Um, we specifically learned about the flute, clarinet, oboe, and bassoon. This one is a big, big instrument that has lots of some coils in itself. It makes really low sounds. Bass clarinet is like a bigger clarinet. And English horn is kind of in between oboe and bassoon. Saxophone is definitely a member of the woodwind family. Not always part of the orchestra just because it was created later, it was invented later. Then we have the brass family, okay? So we have the trumpet, the French horn, trombone, and tuba. What do they have in common? Well, number one, they're all made out of brass, and also it's how the sound is made. So um, my instrument, when I was um, in middle school and high school and college, was the trumpet. So I have a trumpet here, and mine is silver, but just know that it's still made out of brass. The silver is kind of like a coating that goes over it after it's made out of brass, and it's just a different way to protect the um, instrument, the trumpet. But here's my trumpet, and how do we make the sound? We take a big breath in, we put our lips together like this, 
mm, like we're saying, mm, ooh, that was really yummy. And then we try to blow out so that we make a vibration and we call that a buzz. So if I take a big breath in, that's a buzz. Now, once we get good at that, we can put that buzz onto a mouthpiece. And when we do that, it sounds like this. And then once we get really good at that, oh, by the way, with just the mouthpiece, I can go higher and lower in all kinds of different sounds like this. Just by um, changing how much air, how fast it is, and also how tight or relaxed my lips are. Then we put it in the in the trumpet, and just like Miss um, Hicks said from the Minnesota Orchestra, then it becomes it goes through these tubes and these coils, and it comes out kind of like a megaphone. So it's louder, but it also has a different um, quality to the sound. <laughs> The trumpet is the highest sounding one, and they get bigger and lower as they go. Trombone, oh, excuse me, French horn, then trombone, and then tuba. The second link in your seesaw activity, and it's a five minute, five and a half minute video of some people playing from the Minnesota Orchestra. So, it's the brass quintet, if we think about the word quintet, quintet, what, what parts of that word do we recognize. Quint. How many would quint be? Do we have any guesses? Hmm. Count the people in the video. See if you can figure out um, how many a quintet is. So your next step is going to be to watch that video. I want you to be thinking about three things that you notice. So you might want to write them down. Just make yourself a note as you watch. Three things you noticed about the music, okay? We're looking for facts, not opinions. I'm not looking for you to say, I thought it was good, it sounded nice, those are opinions. Um, or it sounded bad, or I didn't like how it sounded. That's what you think and feel about um, the music. I want you to notice what you hear. I want you to think about what you heard, not what you saw. So please don't tell me one of the things I noticed was they were sitting in chairs or the shape that they were playing in. Please tell me what you heard or what you noticed about the sound, about the music that they're playing. And then the other thing to choose one of these, something you wonder about after watching, um, how did the music make you feel? You can tell me how it made you feel or what did the music remind you of. These kinds of things are don't have to be facts. They can be um, how the music affected you. That is our um, seesaw response today. If we look at it, it's over here. Number one says watch the lesson. That's what you're doing right now. And the Minnesota Orchestra video. That's the next link in your seesaw activity. Um, it's under number two. Then you're gonna click the microphone, tell me three things you noticed, and choose one of the following. Something you wondered about, how does this music make you feel, what does this music make you think about, or remind you of. And then you can click done and the green check mark to submit. And that is all for today. I hope you enjoy um, the video. I will see you again next week, bye.